what's going on so let's use formic to make easy forms that have a lot of functionality so here i just got an empty project with a uh, tracker ui already set up i have a theme that has um, a configuration which gives it a default dark theme dark color mode and some fonts by default so but other than that we have an empty app so let me just quickly create a form using chalker ui So here we just have a basic form using Chalker UI. The form is a V stack. I did some styles to center it and all that and it, um, to make it a responsive width. Uh, we have a header that says sign up, um, some form controls here. So a form control that has a label and an input, pretty basic stuff and a button to submit. But uh, um, obviously we want this to do something, right? So let's start using Formic to make this a controlled form and every input a controlled input so we can actually add some powerful functionality to this form. So first thing we're gonna do is um, use the use Formic hook. So this hook takes in an object and we have to pass it in in initial values property and here is just an object and we're gonna want to match the names of our inputs here so obviously the initial values in this case is just gonna be empty right and then we're gonna want to pass in an on submit and it's a function right and formic gives us the values of each input and for now, let's just do an alert of, and let's do JSON stringify values. And not only does it give us values, but it has another argument that it gives us. And it's, we can call it actions. So this lets us do things to our form. So we can do reset form just like that. Now to start using this, let's go over here and on change, we want that to be formic dot handle change and the value we want it to be formic dot values dot username. And we're going to do that same pattern for our uh, password input. So basically whatever you did here would be formic.values dot whatever's in here. And also um, notice how we're doing formic dot. So basically this hook returns everything that we need to control these inputs. So let's try this out. This is types of random stuff. Oh yeah, and on the form, we're gonna wanna do on submit equals formic dot handle submit so let's try this and as you can see it's working fine and it's going to reset our form so this is a pretty basic controlled form but what if we want to add some validation some client side validation to this form so let's say that we you know we want these these things to be required we don't want them to just submit empty stuff and also we want to um, add a requirement that the username can let's say be it has to be at least six characters and we can do that pretty easily using yup yup is a library and formic formic implements yup really easily so we can literally just go here and first we got to import yup and this is how you import yup you do import star as yup from yup and that's how they do it on their documentation so that's how we're going to do it literally all you got to pass in the hook is validation schema and this is going to be yup dot object and this object is going to hold um, our username and our username is going to be yup dot string and then we want it to be a required and then if they submit it 
so basically like if this um if this constraint is not followed it's going to return an error and this is going to be the error message whatever we put in here so we're going to put username required and also we want to make sure that's a minimum of six characters and if they if they um submit the form and it doesn't follow this constraint we're going to want to give them the error message of username is too short so let's do the same thing for password let's go in here and just change this to password so in order to actually show these errors we're going to want to go down here and basically formic gives us it returns an error object and it contains these error messages right so let's go over here and we're going to want to display a form error message and this form error message is going to have formic.errors.username And we're going to want to do the same thing for our password. Right? But um, with Chalker UI, in order to show this error message, we want to go into the form control. And we want is invalid to be true if um, there's an error message in our uh, password or username. Perfect, so let's try submitting this form. As you can see here, it gives us an error right away, but if you if you noticed, um, when we were still typing the username, it already gave us an error for the password. So Formic also returns us an object called touched, and we hook that into our inputs, and basically it prevents this from happening. So how it does that is it hooks into the on blur event of the input, and so on the on blur, we want to do formic dot handle blur. And now to invalidate it, we want to check that there is an error message, but also um, the user has actually touched this input. So it's not going to show up if they haven't even finished inputting um, the form. So now let's try it again. As you can see here, it's working as intended and everything's working fine. So you could really stop here. And from this point forward, we're just gonna work on making our code more reusable and portable. So as you can see, we have kind of a pattern here, like on change value on blur, and it's kind of redundant. So luckily Formic has already thought of this and they have a hook that we can use and we can, and it automatically does the on change value and on blur. So we can get rid of these things right here and we can just use a uh, Formic dot get field props and pass in the name of our input. I want to just structure that. And this basically does um, the on change on blur and value for us so we don't have to do it. So as you can see, everything works as intended. I forgot to change this to password. But yeah, it still works as intended. Perfect. And however, we're still kind of redundant because we're just we're literally using first of all, we're using kind of like the same format except Instead of username, it says password. But not only that, in both of these inputs, we're passing formic.getfield props. So there is an arguably better way of doing this whole thing. And that's instead of using a hook, formic provides us with a component called formic. And this form, uh, this formic component, basically, uh, it calls the use formic hook under the hood and saves that into a context. And so it kind of looks like this, right? And as it passes down the context to his children. So basically, if its child is a function, 
it passes it down as arguments and basically it takes a render prop as a child so let's replace this hook with the um the component and because of that we're gonna be able to make all this um arguably better and more portable you'll see how and by the end of this video we're gonna make some big improvements to this whole thing so let's wrap our component let's make it a child of the formic component So like I said, um, takes a render prop and the render prop returns whatever this hook returns in, under the hood. Now um, in the format component, it takes in these things as props. So instead of passing an object, we'll just do initial values equal. And then um, that would be username and password and also the validation schema let me just um, pass all these props in real quick okay and we can just get rid of this hook completely so as you can see here our form works exactly the same as before see and everything works the same but now um instead of doing the get field props now we can use another component that formic provides which is the field component which is arguably better than what we had before so we could use the field component and it takes an as prop. Basically, we'll pass in the chalker UI input. And so what field does is it detects if its parent is a format component. And if it is, it gets the context of the use format hook, whatever format saved in the context, it gets that information and automatically passes down these props using that. So here, our, our form is still working in the exact same way. Everything's working fine. But we can take this a step further. So as you can see here, and let me close um, the Explorer. So as you can see here, um, we have a form control, right? And we have one here too, and they're really, really similar. So we could take this a step further and just literally make a component, right? So let's go over here and let's just make a uh, text field.jsx. And so we can bring all of this into our text field component. And let's make sure we got all this, all these imports. And so we can take in as props, we can take in a label and let's destructure the rest of the props. And so Formic provides us with a hook, a very useful hook, and it's going to be called the use field hook. And it returns um, the field data and a meta, like the meta, which contains the errors and the touched of that specific field or input so let's use that hook and we're going to pass it in the props and the props should contain the name and it uses the name of the input and to get it all so here we would do meta dot error singular because you know every every field has their own meta meta variable with its own touched and all that stuff And here we just uh, want to spread the field props, which is like on blur, on change, value, stuff like that. And we want to pass the actual props that we pass in. 
in here we want to just render the label and now we have a reusable component so let's go over here and actually render that so text field and we can give it a, a name of password type of password and we can do the same thing here and let's give it some placeholder text as well So now we have basically the same thing, but look how, how by how much we shortened this component. So now everything's the same, but now we have reusable components that we can use. So we can easily just add like another field and call it email. And every, all the functionality goes along with it. And then over here, all we would have to do is add an email uh, prop and do yup.string dot email and this validates that it's a valid email and then we do dot required and now we have usernames right and then see invalid email let's just do at, um, this and it's still invalid because we need a dot com at the end so as you, as you can see here, um, Formic makes it really easy to do all this stuff. And in only like 32 li or 50 lines of code, we did all that. So yeah, I hope um, this helps you do some forms with Chalker UI and Formic. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.